is a Heathkit SB200. It's a high frequency RF power amplifier used in amateur radio applications. Uses a pair of 572 power triodes uh, to provide about 1200 watts input power over 10 to 80 meters. Uh, previous owner uh, actually recapped this one, but uh, we're going to pull the board out and use one of the Harbach power modules with the soft start and put the soft key feature in there so we can use it with modern solid state transceivers. Clean this thing up, uh, retune it up, and should put out about 600, 700 watts. A little rough. Got a few holes in it. We'll sand it down and repaint it. It's pretty dirty. But, uh, should come up looking like new. Let's clean it up and see what uh, we can make this thing do. Okay, I'm getting back to the SB200 here. Um, the original RF output jack, the SO239, was pretty corroded and uh, I measured it was about three tenths of an ohm. And what I did was put a silver plated um, gold conductor SO239 on there. I also took out the BNC for the RF input and I plan on putting a similar connector on here. So let's go ahead and we'll mount that up. And then I took the SWR bridge out, clean, polish that up, and need to go ahead and reinstall that. Uh, the germanium detector diodes, I moved those out of the way very carefully because I didn't want to have to uh, get new ones. Micro Semi actually still makes those, so they are available. There's one right here. And there's one right there. They're pretty fragile. I think they're 1N191s. And uh, we're going to put a new relay in here, clean it all up. Uh, we'll put the soft start. And we'll also put the new power supply board in here from Harbor. The second SO239 installs. And now we're going to go ahead and reinstall it. Okay, the there's the old switching relay. And there is the new switching relay, the hardback relay. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of the RG58 and we're going to put RG8X in its place. So here's what it looks like with the RG8X being put in. Runs up to the relay. And that piece is going to run over to the band switch. Okay, we're now going to put the new power supply module together. So they give you uh, a layout of the printed circuit board here with all the component placement. There's a bunch of the parts right there, power resistors, diodes, and here we are, um, assembling the power supply module. Here's the completed power supply board. It came out pretty clean. And uh, what I did was, I used bigger, much bigger electrolytic capacitors than is supplied with the kit. They're specced at 560 microfarads, and yeah, they measure right around 500, so it's a big improvement over what's applied with the kit. That's the board that we're going to replace. Yeah, you can see it's had some work done to it before. Um, it works, but we're going to go with the new board anyways. Okay, so I took the old board out, the old power supply board, and broke the corner off there so I could sneak the wires out. Uh, replaced a couple of wires that look questionable. And uh, now we're going to go oh, put the new breakers in, clean things up a little bit, and now we're going to go ahead and stick this new board in. Okay, everything's back together. We got our new fan in, relay, capacitors, all kinds of components, the soft star circuitry, the new high voltage board, and the soft key. So everything's in, and um, I think we're ready to fire it up and see if high voltage comes up. A little bit more cleanup to do, but uh, let's fire it up and see if it okay, works. We're gonna... Okay, we're going to bring this up in a variac, see if we can minimize the fire and smoke. Yep, fan spinning. Filaments are on. No smoke, no working. A major milestone. Okay, let's see what we got. About. 2300 volts. Don't want to go sticking our hands in this one. 
Looks good so far. Okay, we're going to try to get an idea of how much power our amplifier puts out. Let's take a look at the excitation power. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. So, I don't know, around 90 watts. Okay, here's our one, two, three. So there's the power output of our SB200. We're running off of 115 volt supplies and a little over 600 watts being driven by a Kenwood TS480 into a dummy load. Testing one, two, three. Looks pretty healthy. So that's what it looks like completed. Came out pretty clean and seems to work pretty good. Over 600 watts out and 115 volts.